The trade deadline is now in the past and all focus is on the final 30 plus games of the regular season here in year number one of the Golden State Warriors, my NBA franchise here on NBA 2K25. We're going to get through the final part of the first half of the year, get through the All-Star break and the early games afterwards. So we've got a lot to cover today coming off an exciting trade deadline. In case you missed the episode, I'll leave a card at the top right of your screen because there were a number of big moves, not just with our team, but across the entirety of the NBA. And it feels like the landscape of the league has changed a little bit. The highlights include Anthony Simons going to the Rockets, replacing Jalen Green, who's now a Raptor, Zach Levine to the Spurs, the Jazz sell the farm a little bit, trading Colin Sexton and Walker Kessler, and obviously we made the splash of the trade deadline, acquiring Jimmy Butler for the Miami Heat. I had talked about the idea of potentially getting a second star, and with Jimmy Butler unlikely to re-sign with the Miami Heat this offseason, I felt like he was the perfect guy for us to go out and get. The deal was hit with some mixed opinions in the comments, which I kind of expected. I understand the concern with this because Jimmy Butler is 35 years old. He is on an expiring contract, but I think he fits our timeline really well. I think we've got a few more years in the Curry title window, and we're able to make this move by leaving the episode with the same amount of first round picks that we entered it with. We didn't have to trade away Brandon Pajemski, and most importantly, we didn't have to trade away Jonathan Kuminga. And when we had talked about the idea of getting another star, it seemed like Kuminga would have to be in the deal, but we were able to hold on to him, and this kind of signals that we will look to re-sign him in the offseason, and I don't view this as a dynamic duo. I view it as a big three, with Curry, Butler, and Kuminga. That's the trio we're going to build around over the next few seasons. Jimmy Butler's having a really good year in Miami. He's averaging around 26-5 and five on great efficiency, but in order for this move to work, we're going to need to have him here for more than a couple of months. Whether he accepts the player option or signs an extension, it will be imperative that he's back on the roster next year, and that's part of the risk we took by making this trade. But I say no reason for Jimmy Butler to not want to stick around. And sure, we gave up quite a bit in a large three-team deal that also had Jaime Jaquez Jr. go to the Orlando Magic and Jalen Suggs, who's had a terrific year going to the Miami Heat, forming a strong big three with Bam Adebayo and Tyler Hero. Now, we did lose a lot of depth here. D'Anthony Melton going to the Magic. Miami acquiring Andrew Wiggins, Kevon Looney, and Gary Payton, all three of whom were key role players on the 2022 title team. But we made a second trade that I think was able to recoup a lot of the depth that we lost. The Sixers coveted Moses Moody, a restricted free agent in the offseason, and a guy who I wasn't really sold on giving an extension to. Moses Moody is probably the best asset in this deal, but we got three guys who I think are going to be able to play for us, and we also added a pretty strong first-round pick, albeit it's in five years from now, but it's a swap best pick between the Sixers and the Clippers. So this is what the rotation looks like, and I think this will be our starting five for the rest of the year, bearing injuries. I think this group fits the best at the top. The big question with this team is going to be the depth. We're a little bit less well-rounded than we were before the trade deadline. We don't really have a backup point guard right now, but once Brandon Pajemski is back, I think the rotation is going to look a lot better. Kyle Anderson should be back soon as well. So part of the reason why the depth looks pretty rough right now is because of the injuries. But Anderson should be back any day, and Brandon Pajemski hopefully will be back around the start of March. I don't know how much better this is going to make our team. We are the fifth seed in the Western Conference right now, but it certainly raises the ceiling, and I think that's the number one goal. Steph Curry is a great player, and I think even at 36, 37 years old, he can still be a number one option for a contender, but he can't do it alone. As good as Jonathan Kuminga has been, we need another dependable scoring option and another true star. Jimmy Butler is a playoff riser. He plays his best basketball in the postseason, and I think having a guy like that is really valuable. We've got six games before the All-Star break to take a look at our new squad, all six of which are on the road, and we'll play this first game in Utah against the Jazz. Obviously, Utah had a big deadline themselves, trading Colin Sexton and Walker Kessler to try to focus on on building around Laurie Markin and, and many of the young players on this team, such as Keontae George, Taylor Hendricks, Cody Williams, Isaiah Collier, Bryce Sensabaugh, and Kyle Filipowski. This is who Danny Ainge is. He gets assets and he sells high. I guess Walker Kessler really wasn't a sell high, but it's either sell or wait for him to never have value. 
And the Jazz were able to add a first rounder from New Orleans in the Kessler deal. They added an intriguing rookie in Jalen Tyson from Cleveland along with four second rounders for Colin Sexton. Remember, this game was supposed to be in the last episode, but we had to push it back because the PlayStation did not want to cooperate. But you guys are going to get to see this matchup here. Jimmy Butler in his first game as a Warrior against the Utah Jazz. And we'll see how Golden State is able to fare with this six-game road trip prior to the All-Star game. The Jazz, in terms of record, are one of the worst teams in the NBA. But we've got a lot to figure out. Half of our rotation has never played here. Trace Jackson Davis wins the tip and we are underway. Trade deadline over. Jimmy Butler era is here. And let's see how it goes for Golden State. Curry in the corner. Buddy healed for three. Buddy Heald was floated in trade rumors, a guy we wanted to prioritize holding on to, and luckily we were able to. He'll be the starting two for the rest of the year. Utah looking for a basket right back, and they get one off the three from Jordan Clarkson. Butler, welcome to Golden State. His first shot is a smoked layup. It's really off to a flying start here. Marking it in the corner. Clarkson, another three. On the way, it's good. Two early triples for Jordan Clarkson. And it's 6-3 in favor of Utah. Butler, pump fake on the drive. Sends it in the corner. Steph Curry, wide open triple. I think what makes Jimmy Butler exciting in this offense is that he can play with the ball in his hands, giving Curry more opportunities off the ball, such as that play. Clarkson, another three. He has made three triples in the first two minutes of this game. Kuminga misses from deep. Trace Jackson Davis with the rebound and the putback over John Collins who is now the full-time center for the Jazz for the rest of the year. 11-10, high-scoring start so far. Here is Curry with it. Fade away three over George, and Curry's already got eight. He's off to a quick start for Golden State, and it's 13-11. Utah looking to respond. Clarkson off the screen. How about another? Jordan Clarkson is in fuego. He's got a dozen here just four minutes into the game. 13-14, Kuminga with it on the drive. He has the mismatch with Clarkson, makes the short jumper, draws the foul, and and one. I'm really curious to see how Kuminga looks as the third option. He might get less opportunities, but the defense is also going to be less focused on him. Butler, lawn two is good, and there's Jimmy Butler's first points as a Warrior. Took a little bit longer than we hoped. He missed a couple shots to start the game, but he's now on the board. Kuminga with the pump fake on the drive, sends it in the corner. Right wing three will fall for Buddy Heald, and the Warriors seem to be finding a groove on both ends of the floor. They now lead 21-16. Keontae George tries to lob it up for Markin, and he cannot. Good play by Butler to spin the ball away. Good ball movement by Golden State. Draymond connects with Kuminga for the slam. 23-18 now. Kuminga trapped inside. Has Draymond open in the corner. Misses the three. There was nobody within a mile of him. And in transition, Clarkson. He is still hot. We've got a few other new faces in the game. Ricky Council the fourth gets it to Caleb Martin, both of whom came from the Sixers, along with Adem Bona, who should be coming in pretty soon. As Kuminga with a nice drive and finish. He's got seven. 25-23. Both offenses not slowing down. Steph on the drive. The acrobatic layup is good, despite solid defense from Keontae George. 27-23. George, the second-year guard out of Baylor, gets it to John Collins. His three will fall. Utah is living and dying by the long ball, and it's working. Jazz now up by two. Curry off the screen, no good. Rebound by Adembona, who gets the put back. The second round rookie out of UCLA didn't really get much playing time with the Sixers, but he's going to have a role in this rotation, and I like him a lot. Versatile defender, high energy guy, can score inside a little bit. Curry, step back. Bang! 13 for Steph. And the Warriors take the lead late in the first quarter. Caleb Martin was right in his way as he made that shot. He's got to get used to leaving Curry some space. Lavert at the buzzer. It's good, and it will count. What a play by Karis Lavert, also acquired in the Colin Sexton deal with Cleveland. And that'll wrap up an exciting first quarter. Both offenses going back and forth. Clarkson with 15, Curry with 13. We are knotted up at 33 now into the second. Here's Cody Williams, the rookie from Colorado. In for the fellow rookie, Kyle Filipowski. Drafted in the second round out of Duke. 35-33, Butler over to Butler, over to Caleb Martin, and he gets his first points as a Warrior. Having Jimmy and Jared Butler here is gonna be very confusing, so we'll, we'll see how it goes. Hopefully it's not too weird. 
Lavert fought the catch, hits a three while being smothered by Trace Jackson Davis. 38-36, Butler on the drive, nobody to guard him before it's too late. Jimmy with the layup, he's got five, and with Curry out, Butler will be the leader of the offense for a little bit as he gets the layup inside, and Jimmy seems to be finding his groove. He's used to being the number one guy, now he's not, so it's probably going to take some time for him to adjust. Butler with it on the drive, with the throwdown. Jimmy with six points already here in the second quarter. One for four in the first, but three for three so far in the second. Great ball movement by Golden State. It's Martin with the assist for Jimmy Butler. He's got 11. 44-40, the standout rookie guard out of USC. Isaiah Collier with a nice move on Jared Butler. And Collier hits the three, drafted late in the first round. Former top high school recruit. Good pass by Draymond for Trace Jackson Davis who misses the open shot, but Draymond nearly steals it away from Collier. Ball still on the ground, and it's picked up by Jimmy Butler. Why did Draymond not keep going to the basket? Is he stupid? And now he turns the ball over. Draymond, what are we doing? You made a great defensive play just to look like you have no clue what you're doing on offense. I mean, I guess that is typical Draymond. As Trace Jackson Davis slithers through with the slam off the assist from Steph. Clarkson guarded by Curry. These two guys have been trading punches today. Clarkson with the layup, and the lead is within one. 46-45, Clarkson with it again on the drive. Trapped inside, and that one is somehow good. It didn't even look like that he was looking at the net as he shot the ball, but it still goes in. Clarkson this time off the mark. Good defense by Jimmy, and here comes Golden State. Up by one. Jonathan Kuminga looks to drive by Hendricks, and Kuminga! is there with the slam. It looked like he hesitated a little bit, but makes the right decision to go up with it and send it home. 52-49, Kuminga's doubled out to Curry. Step back, long ball, bang! Another three for Curry. The Jazz have had no answer for him. 55-51, Lowry Markkinen with it. Out to a wide open, Keontae George, a dynamic scorer. The efficiency for George really hasn't been there, but if he can be a little bit more consistent, he could be really something special. Hendricks with the steal, lobs it up for John Collins! And the Jazz take the lead, what a play by Utah! 56-55, Council over to Trace Jackson Davis in the corner, Curry, nothing but net again. 21 in the first half for Steph, and the Jazz lead is short-lived. 58-56, Caleb Martin with it, pull up J is good. Martin was a guy the Sixers were really excited about signing, but he had a rough season with them, his efficiency was not good, and they wanted to get out of that contract. Wow, a big snuff at the rim. I think it was Markin, and we got a hand on the layup from Ricky Council. Clarkson looking to tie. Step back jumper takes a lucky, lucky bounce. Shooter's touch for Jordan Clarkson. We're knotted up at 60 as the Warriors will get the last shot here in the first half. It's Curry with it. Who else is going to take this shot? Curry in isolation. Throws up a three, and it's no good. That'll wrap up a really fun first half here in Salt Lake City. Knotted up at 60. Both offenses looking great. Jordan Clarkson and Steph Curry have been phenomenal. Clarkson with 23, Steph with 21. Both guys have been really efficient. Jimmy Butler took a little bit to get going, but was really impressive in that second quarter. He's currently got 11 here in his Warriors debut. As that'll bring us into the second half, we'll see if either side is really able to get some momentum and take this game over. The Jazz are a lot worse than us. This should be our opportunity to get a nice win here on this schedule to kick off a long road trip. As Curry makes the layup to start the scoring, he matches Clarkson with 23. Clarkson tries to lob it up for Collins. He's unsuccessful. In transition, Jimmy Butler with it. Has Jackson Davis. Layup is good. Jimmy's a really good passer. He leads all small forwards and assists per game this year at over five and a half. Again, often running the Miami offense as Clarkson hits the pull-up jumper. 64-62. Butler with it on the drive. Blows by Markinen and Collins, and he is there for the dunk. The lack of interior defense on this team is noticing. Interesting that they still traded Kessler away as Curry hits the jumper. Jazz call a timeout, and Curry hits the shimmy shake. 68-64. Curry with it. Pick and pop. Kuminga, deep three. That takes a very lucky bounce, and it's good. Hendricks not able to close out quick enough. 71-64, seven-point lead. The Warriors, as they should, are starting to build up a nice lead, but Markkinen gets a lucky bounce of his own. What goes around comes around. 71-67 now. Curry with it on the drive. His pass is tipped away and stolen by Jordan Clarkson. 
Utah in transition. The Warriors looking to keep up with him as he gets it to Taylor Hendricks. Hendricks back to Clarkson, and the Jazz will look to reset the possession. They're trying to get Markin and open off the screen. Throws up the three, and it's off the mark. Rebound by Draymond, and the Warriors call a timeout. Somebody's hurt on the play, and unfortunately for us, it's Steph Curry. Look at his left leg as he passes it. Right there. Lands awkwardly on Keontae George's foot. Grabbing at his hip in pain. He was still able to run back on defense, but he's going to come out of the game. That's not good news. The Jimmy Butler era, not off to a great start. And now Jimmy's going to have to lead us probably for the rest of this game to the win as he makes the layup. 75-69. Markin in three. Off the mark. Rebound by a Dembona. Here comes the Warriors in transition. Butler gets an open look in the corner and drills the three. He's now got 22. The Warriors looking to rally for their injured teammate as Butler steals it away from Clarkson and takes it himself with the slam. Jimmy with the first seven points after Steph Curry comes out of the game with an injury as it's 80 to 71. Utah now looking to get a few baskets, gets themselves back into the game and there's a big one. Laurie Markkinen for three. 80 to 74, Hendricks and George passing it around. Lobs it up for Markkinen who slides through on the backdoor cut and sends it home. 80 to 76, here's Ricky Council the fourth, his first basket as a Warrior off the assist by Jimmy Butler who is running a lot of point guard. Jared Butler's in the game right now as well, but Jimmy's the guy leading the offense. Nice layup by Clarkson. Golden State calls a timeout. Lead sits at four. Kuminga on the drive with the slam. Look at the bottom right. It's a strained left hip for Steph. It's a four to six week injury. Strained hips are generally something you can play through, but obviously not something you want to risk with your 36, soon to be 37 year old star. Kuminga makes the layup, 87 to 80. Here is Council with the screen from a Dembona. Council looks to drive by the defender, floats it up and in. Nice play by Ricky Council with just a few seconds left in the third. Levert's likely going to heave it up from half court, and it is no good. In terms of basketball, a good quarter for the Warriors. They outscore the Jazz by nine. In terms of optics, not a good quarter because our best player is now going to be lingering with a hip injury for the next month. It's unclear how long he won't play, but he will be out for the rest of this game. Jimmy Butler, take us home. He starts the fourth with a dunk and up to 26 points. It's also going to be a big quarter for Jonathan Kuminga as well in a big stretch of games with Curry likely out. Nice play there by Adem Bona. Gets that one to fall. He's got four, and I feel like Bona's given us some really solid high-energy minutes tonight. Levert in the corner. Isaiah Collier for three. I don't really know why Levert didn't take the easy layup inside, but that works too. Ball is flying around. Jazz get it back, but not for long. It's stolen away. Adembona with the turnover. Kuminga for three. And he knew it was in as soon as he shot it. 13-point lead for the Warriors. And now we're going to officially try the Jimmy Butler at point guard experiment. I don't want Jared Butler starting games. I don't want him closing games. But our only other alternative in terms of someone who's healthy is Corey Joseph. And that's... That's probably even worse. So Jimmy Butler is going to be running point guard for the rest of the way today as Kuminga lays it up and in with the foul and one. The Warriors have unironically played really well since Curry got injured. 185. Levert with it in the corner. Gets it to Keontae George for three. Utah trying to stay in it. They bring the lead down to a dozen. 188. Butler in the corner. Kuminga again. He's heating up. 25 for Jonathan Kuminga, and it's a 15-point game. Here is George with it on the drive. Gets by Jimmy Butler, who tries to go for the steal, but George makes a nice play, getting him to lean the other way. Here is Williams, blocked inside! Trace Jackson Davis with the denial. TJD was slow to get to the paint, but makes up for it with a big block. On the inbound, Taylor Hendricks on the baseline, gets it to Markinen. Finding space, hits the three, and so it all works out for Utah. They bring the lead within nine. 103-94, Trace Jackson Davis with the drive. Layup is good. Trace Jackson Davis has been able to run the floor for us at times, a skill that I wasn't really expecting from him coming into the year, but something he's shown some flashes in as he makes the layup. Now a double-double for the big man, 10 and 12. 107-94, Butler throws it up, no good. Trace Jackson Davis with the rebound. Back out to Butler, inside for Trace Jackson Davis. Makes the layup, draws the foul on and one, and to make matters worse, Keontae George is on the floor in pain, grabbing at what looks like his lower right leg. 
that could be the dagger in this game for a number of ways. I mean, for one thing, the lead's going to move up to 16, now 17. And the Jazz are now without their talented, young, possibly franchise point guard. Clarkson inside. Layup is no good. Warriors looking to push the pace quickly. Butler, Kuminga, fast break three. Bang! 28 for Jonathan Kuminga. The lead sits at 20, and that should just about do it as Isaiah Collier dribbles out the clock. An impressive win here on the road for the Warriors. This game was tied, remember, at halftime. Golden State outscores the Jazz by 17 in the second half, winning 125 to 108. But this game certainly was not sunshine and rainbows for us with the injury to Steph Curry. I will say, before he got hurt, I loved what I saw from the three of our stars combining for 86 points. Curry was hooping before he got injured. He had 25 and then these two guys were able to finish strong. 31 for Butler, 30 for Kuminga. These guys look like they can all play off each other, which is a big deal. And we're going to need Butler and Kuminga to continue to play well, with Curry likely missing some time. Trace Jackson Davis had a good game, and everybody else played to their role for the most part. Nobody else really stood out. And, well, we're going to need that to change with Curry probably missing time. But for today, it was fine. 32 for Clarkson. Levert and George played well, marking in with an inefficient 15. And again, really strong win. The offense was tremendous. The defense was good in the second half. But we've got to figure out what we're going to do with Steph Curry. Because on one hand, I don't want to play a 37-year-old through an injury. But we don't have any other true point guards. So what we're going to do is we're going to stick with the Jimmy Butler at point guard experiment. And he will start there going forward. I think the plan is Curry's going to be out through the All-Star break. He's not going to be fully healthy by the time the break ends, but we're on a playoff run. We're going to need him. I think sitting him for these next five games and him not playing the All-Star game is probably the best course of action so he can return in two weeks. So with that, we'll simulate these next five games, rounding out this road trip. And since the trade deadline hasn't technically passed, we get offered this deal. Jonathan Kuminga for Trey Jones. I think I'm going to pass. Unfortunately, the team struggled without Steph mightily. We did beat the Lakers. The duo of Butler and Kuminga both looked really good. Kuminga had 38 points while Butler at 26, 10, and 5. But afterwards, we hit the struggle bus. Now, I will say, Jimmy Butler individually is playing really well. He has scored 25 points in 5 of 6 games since the trade. And he has looked more than fine running the point. Jonathan Kuminga has played well, too. He has scored 24 in four of the six games since the deal. He's averaging 25 in February after averaging 25 in January. So individually, those two guys are playing well. But we're really missing Steph Curry, and it's been clear. Against the Rockets, I decided to make a change. We decided to start Jared Butler at the point. And Jimmy struggled with 11 points and 11 assists, outscored by his namesake, who ended with 12 points. I don't know why Jared Butler is playing 36 minutes, though, but it's not ideal when Draymond Green and Caleb Martin, the two most inefficient players on the roster, go 0 for 8. Yikes. So that'll bring us to All-Star Weekend, and we are going to have some participants. Let's take a look at our official All-Star rosters, starting with the West. Steph Curry, obviously, here, his 10th All-Star nod. I'm hoping that the game does not have him play in this game. There's no reason to risk re-injury. He still gets the honor of making it, but I do not want him out on the floor. We might be the first team in history to have representatives for the Western Conference team and the Eastern Conference team because Jimmy Butler is an all-star. He makes it for the seventh time and he will be playing for the Eastern Conference. Even though he's now on our team, he made it as a Miami Heat, as a member of the East. So he will play this game for the Eastern Conference. In terms of voting, Curry finishes in fifth in terms of backcourt in the West. And then apparently they've got Jimmy Butler now with the Western guys here. No Jonathan Kuminga. I get it, as good as he's been, probably not better than anyone on that list. As for the East, Cade Cunningham would have been an all-star if not for a severe right ankle sprain, so I'm going to go cry myself in a corner. And then in terms of the forwards, I think Jimmy finished in sixth in terms of voting here before the trade could be mistaken. As for the other events in the slam dunk contest, we've got the Slash Bros with Scoot Henderson and Shaden Sharp joined by Amen and Asar Thompson. We do not have any representatives in the three-point contest either, although our good friend Clay Thompson is there. And then in the Rising Stars game, no rookies, obviously. The first time we've played a rookie was Adem Bona, who joined our team last week. But we do have a sophomore here. All lottery picks here, except for Cam Whitmore, who was supposed to be a lottery pick, and Trace Jackson Davis, the 57th pick. 
in the 2023 NBA draft has turned out to be one of the better players in this class and this honor is well deserved he's played really well over the last couple of months averaging around 11 and 10 with two blocks a game he's been hooping so since we're not really going to have any notable participants other than Trace Jackson Davis coming off the bench for the Rising Stars game and Jimmy Butler playing for the opposite conference we'll skip through All-Star Weekend as the sophomore team beats the rookie team why is the rookie team using their minutes like this why did all the starters play at least 35 as much as I love Ron Holland and boy am I high on him why is he playing 41 minutes to shoot three for 13 odd Wemby leads the sophomores with 28. Scoot played well, as did Amen Thompson. Trace Jackson Davis with 3 and 7 in 16 minutes of action. That'll bring us to All-Star Saturday night. Clay Thompson does win the three-point contest, while Amen Thompson wins the dunk contest. As for the All-Star game, normally if we had like a young guy playing or something, I would player lock with them, but... We have two All-Stars, and neither of them are playing for our conference. Curry will not go, and Jimmy Butler is playing for the East. So we're going to simcast here. Who are we supposed to root for? The East does end up getting the win. Yay for Jimmy, but not yay for our conference. Giannis wins the All-Star Game MVP while Jimmy scores 7 points in 7 minutes. Luka leads the West with 28. Kevin Durant played well, too. And now that brings us to the second half of the year, and we've got some decisions to make regarding Steph Curry because, again... He's not fully healthy, but he's a lot better off than he was when he suffered the injury around two weeks ago. With us being in the midst of a playoff chase, we're going to play him through this injury. I'm hoping he'll be fully healthy around the Hornets or Magic game in late February, and we're going to have him on a minutes restriction before he's fully healthy. We're going to proceed with caution, but I want him on the floor. So we're going to simulate to this Hornets game. We'll go through our next two matchups with Curry playing slightly less than normal. So Jimmy Butler and Jonathan Kuminga are still going to have to be the alphas of the offense. We would end up splitting the two games, beating the Kings in the first one. Now, for whatever reason, I guess the game was glitched or something, and they gave all of the starters for both teams a whole lot of minutes. Jimmy had a triple-double, but he played 45 minutes. Curry played 38. Kuminga led the scoring with 27. Luckily, my rotation was actually used in this game against Dallas, but we ended up losing by four, so maybe having all of our starters play the entire game using the Tom Thibodeau method might be the way to go. Next up, we've got the Charlotte Hornets, who have not had a great year themselves, but they've got a bright future with LaMelo Ball and Brandon Miller leading the way, Steph Curry now fully healthy, and Jimmy Butler gets introduced to the crowd in his second home game as a Warrior. Paul six, seven. Number 22, Jimmy Butler. Warrior Faithful seems excited about having Jimmy Butler, and I'm excited about having him get more chemistry with Steph Curry. The two of them have only played a couple full games together, so the more they're on the floor at the same time, the better. As we look at our upcoming schedule, there's something interesting I noticed. You know how they always put the picture of the best player for the other team here? There's a polar bear in Arlington, Texas in this photo. Sorry, Andre, I love you, but I had to do it. Anyway, let's get set for this matchup against the Charlotte Hornets towards the bottom of the Eastern Conference, but still a fun team. We mentioned LaMelo Ball. We mentioned Brandon Miller. Both of them have been playing really well. Ball's averaging over 28 a game. Miller's averaging around 25. And they've got some other solid young pieces, including Mark Williams and the French rookie, Tijon Salon. Trace Jackson Davis and Steven Adams meet up for the tip. It goes to TJD and the Warriors, and we are underway here at the Chase Center. Steph Curry off his minutes restriction. We played him 35 and a half minutes per game with the restriction, so who knows how he's going to play without it as he starts the scoring with an early three in the corner. Miles Bridges with it, 27 days, 27 nights. Trace Jackson Davis sends this ball on a flight, and here comes the Warriors in transition. But he healed with it over to Curry. Pump fake looking to drive by LaMelo Ball. Not known for his defense. And, well, we certainly saw it there. The footwork from LaMelo on that possession was dreadful. 5-0. Curry pull up. Jumper will fall. He's got the first seven for anybody in this game. Now 7-2. Kuminga with it on the drive. Gets it in the corner for Jimmy Butler. Guarded by Brandon Miller. Jimmy Butler. Floater is good. And it is now 9-2. A quick start for the Warriors on both ends of the floor. Brandon Miller with it over to LaMelo Ball on the drive. Throws it up and in. Nice play there by Mello. That's the first field goal of the entire game for Charlotte. 9-5 now. 
Kuminga with it on the drive. In the corner, Jimmy Butler. Pump fake. Butler, layup, no good. Jackson Davis with the rebound, and he gets the putback over Steven Adams. 11 to five now, LaMelo fakes out the step back with Curry. Now Miles Bridges has it on the wing. Bridges looking for space, and he hits the three. Not the only thing Miles Bridges has ever hit, and it's 11 to eight. Jimmy Butler with it on the drive, gets it over to Jackson Davis on the right wing for Buddy Heald, who has a busy start doing a little bit of everything and he gets his first points of the game from beyond the arc. 14 to eight, Butler with a dime for Trace Jackson Davis in transition with the slam, 16 to eight. Brendan Miller with it now, gets it over to Miles Bridges again, and that one is off the mark. Adams with the rebound, Brandon Miller for three, and Brandon Miller gets that one to drop, and it's 16 to 11. Curry with it. Drives inside, floats it up and in. Steph's got nine, continuing his impressive opening to this game. Brandon Miller pull up jumper, no good. Nice defense by Jimmy Butler. And here comes the Warriors on the fast break. Butler looks to take it himself, has Kuminga on the wing. And Jonathan Kuminga, his development as a three-point shooter continues to be oh so impressive. Golden State is up by 10. They are rocking the doors off of Charlotte early. Hornets look to get on a run. There's a big shot. Fade away three for Trey Mann. 22-16. Brandon Miller with it on the drive. Miller jumper. That one is good. And the lead quickly is within four. The Hornets are right back in the game. A Dembona with it on the drive. With the slam. As I talked about, this is a high energy, explosive athlete for a big guy. And a Dembona continues to be impressive in his limited role so far with Golden State. Bridges out to Miller, he kills another three. Brandon Miller is a weapon the way he shoots the ball, something that, well, he knows a thing or two about. As it's a one point game, Curry, deep three. You cannot leave Steph with any kind of space because he will make you pay, even at six feet beyond the three point line. Look at this mismatch, Curry guarding Mark Williams and that goes about as well as you would expect it to. 27-29 now, Curry with it, over to Draymond Green, inside, and one! The poster slam over Mark Williams, who is called for the foul, Draymond fired up. Five point lead, Warriors gotta get rid of this ball here within the next few seconds. It's Curry with it, guarded by Hamadou Diallo. Curry sends up a three, it's no good, and that'll wrap up the first. 32-27, Warriors with the lead over the Hornets, as that'll bring us into the second. Vasile Micic, the veteran guard, is inside with the layup and the foul and and one. Micic in his second NBA season, prior to that a long career overseas, as Jimmy Butler is there with the dunk. Quiet start scoring wise for Butler, he does have three early assists though. Micic with it, looking for the screen, and he sends it over to Mark Williams, and Williams is there with the dunk. Mark Williams it was a guy we briefly looked at as a possible trade candidate. Hornets wanted a lot for him, understandably so, despite his injury history as LaMelo blocks Butler inside. On the other end, it's Hamadou Diallo with the layup. Diallo, a very impressive athlete, still trying to catch on here as a role player as Kuminga hits the three and the lead is within one. Hornets call a timeout in what otherwise has been a great start to the second quarter for Charlotte. So far, they're outscoring the Warriors 11 to five. Hamadou Diallo with it. Tomahawk slam! Mama, there goes that man. A big time slam for Hamadou Diallo. 42-39, Grant Williams for three. That one is good. Grant Williams probably said, I'm gonna miss that one. So naturally, he makes it. Six point game, Butler on the drive, gets by Trey Mann using his strength and physicality to out muscle the smaller guard. 45-41, LaMelo with it, pull up three is good. Charlotte started this game slow on offense and lethargic, but over the last seven or eight minutes, they've been on fire. Both teams scrambling for the ball, Jimmy Butler ends up with it, and here comes the Warriors on the run. Butler layup is good, he takes it himself from coast to coast, and it's a five point game. Golden State's defense has got to step up though. The Hornets have damn near 40 points in the last 10 minutes, and they're not showing signs of slowing down. Lamelo Ball hits the three, Hornets lead at eight. This does not look like one of the worst teams in the league, the way they played their offense today, but a big response from Curry. He's in for the layup, draws the foul from the Lamelo Ball, and the lead is within five. 
51-46, ball inside, Brandon Miller with the slam. Miller with the cut, nobody was inside to defend him, that was very poor defense. Hornets with a defensive lapse of their own, but Curry misses. Here comes Miles Bridges with it inside. Layup is no good. Gets his own miss. And he's blocked by Bona. What a great play there by the rookie of Dembona. And on the other end, Council over to Kuminga. Three for three from beyond the arc to start this one. For Jonathan Kuminga, he's got nine. And the lead is within four, the closest it's been in a little while. Ball is on the ground, and it's going to end up with Buddy Heald. Kuminga to Council on the way. Blocked by Miller. What a play there by the Hornets in transition with a defensive stop. Miles Bridges makes the layup, and it's a six-point Charlotte lead. A huge play for the Hornets. 56-49, two minutes to go in the first half. Jimmy Butler with it on the drive. That one is good. Butler's ability to score in contact is really impressive. Reminds me a lot of using Darius Springer in the Blazers series as it's 56-51. Miles Bridges inside. Brandon Miller makes the layup over the extended arm of Jonathan Kuminga. And here comes the Hornets. Misich with it over to Miles Bridges. He sends it home. Bridges with a powerful punch to the rim. You guys know where I'm going next. I don't even have to say it. Here is Jimmy Butler, reverse layup. That one will fall, seven point lead. The Warriors continuing to keep themselves in the game despite Charlotte's impressive offensive run. Bridges now off the catch for three. 10 point lead for the Hornets, their biggest of the game. Following possession, Bridges back with it, guarded by Draymond Green. Couple of Spartans out to Brandon Miller, the killer. 13 point lead now. The Hornets offense is playing out of their minds. 66-53, Golden State looking for one more shot off the screen. Curry, mid-range jumper is good. He's got 17, 66-55. Misich will throw it up at the end of the first half. That second quarter did not go well at all. We were outscored 39-23. to The offense was subpar. The defense was worse than subpar. Now, I will say the Hornets have hit some really impressive shots, and it hasn't really been a one-man show. Everybody's producing. LaMelo's having a good game. Brandon Miller's having a good game. Misich off the bench is balling. Miles Bridges started slow. I think he opened this game one for six, but now he's really starting to get into a groove, and he's looking to keep that going here in the third quarter as he misses the three. Adams tips back the rebound. Adams with it now. Gets the slam. Steven Adams with the dunk. 68-57, and the Warriors call a timeout. We've got another injury. So as you'll notice here, Trace Jackson Davis is boxing out Adams, and he lands awkwardly on his left leg. This time he didn't land on Adams. It was a full non-contact injury, looking at what looks like his lower back. Jimmy Butler hits the open three in the corner. I don't know how the Warriors are going to manage without really a center. I mean, we saw how they did without a point guard. Adem Bona is going to be running a lot of the five the rest of the way as Jonathan Kuminga hits another three. Kuminga still perfect from deep. 70-63, to LaMelo with it out to Brandon Miller. Miller has been contested regularly on his three-point shots, and he's just not missing. Brandon Miller has been very impressive. LaMelo ball with it, spin move inside, layup, and the foul. And one, it's Curry called for the foul. 76-65, Butler trying to cross over Trey Mann. He's doubled, Kuminga wide open, and he just will not miss. Five of five from deep. 76-68, Curry with it on the drive. Why are you leaving Jimmy Butler wide open? The Warriors open the second half, four for four from deep. Butler with a pair, Kuminga with a pair. All four threes assisted on with these shots coming after the catch. As Curry will make the layup. Uncharacteristic, but it works. He was trying to lob it up for Bona. Tipped back into his hands. He makes the play, and it's a one-score game. Golden State now finally getting into a groove. But Steven Adams with a big-time slam over a Dem Bona. Wow, what a play. Curry looking to respond quickly, and he does. Layup on the other end, 78-75. This is a very high-scoring game. Both offenses are moving fast and efficient. It's been a track meet as Brandon Miller hits another three. 81-76, Trey Mann with it, guarded by Buddy Heald. Man, his shot is good, and it is a seven-point lead, and the Warriors call a timeout, trying to regroup and get some energy back. This game really suits a team like the Hornets better because they're young, they're energetic, they're quick. There's Brandon Miller with the poster. The Warriors, meanwhile, are an older team. Many of our key players are above the age of 30. 
So this game continues to stay super fast-paced. I don't know how we're going to keep up with the Hornets unless they start missing. They haven't really shown signs of that being the case. Brandon Miller hits another three. 88 to 80. Curry with it. Trapped inside. Somebody's got to be open. It's Kyle Anderson who takes all day to shoot the ball, but it goes in. 88-83 now. Grant Williams with it over to LaMelo Ball. Heavily contested. Doesn't matter. The Hornets continue to make seemingly everything from beyond the arc. 91-83. Here is Draymond with it. He's trapped. Curry now gets rid of it quickly, and it falls despite a quick contest from Mark Williams. 91-86. Curry tries to rip it away from Misich. He'll hold on to it. Gets it to Brandon Miller off the screen again. Brandon Miller is unstoppable right now. The Warriors have no answer for the second-year pro out of Alabama. How about another? Doesn't go in, but Williams is here with the offensive rebound, and he gets the putback over Draymond, who has to run some five himself with the injury to Trace Jackson Davis. The Hornets play three centers big minutes. Right now, we have one healthy center, and it's a second-round rookie. At the end of the third, Kyle Anderson's shot is no good. Eight-point deficit going into the fourth. On one hand, we're the better team than the Hornets. We're at home. We should be able to come back. But the Hornets are playing their style of basketball, and they have the clear size advantage over us in terms of us not really having many bigs. There's Misich off the turnover, makes the jumper. 11-point lead. Misich continues to have a really impressive game off the bench. Jimmy Butler with it over to Ricky Council for three, and it is good! Over the back foul on Butler, but the shot will still count, and the lead sits at eight. Golden State's got to get on a run at some point. Butler pull-up jumper, nice shot on the move, is good, despite a quick relay from Hamadou Diallo. 99-93, Misic with it, guarded by Jared Butler. Jumper is good. And Vasile Misic continues to really score the ball at a high level. That's not really his game, but he's making it work today. Butler out to Kuminga. There's another one. 20 for Kuminga. He continues to shoot the piss out of the ball. Five-point game. Misic drive. Layup is good. Seven-point lead for the Hornets. He's got 16 leading the second unit. Draymond will inbound. Gets it over to Curry. Long two. That's a 30-piece for Wardell. 109-102 with around five to play. Grant Williams with it in the corner. Out to Brandon Miller for three. And it is a 10-point lead for the Hornets. Golden State's got to start now. It's now or never at this point with four minutes to go. And the Hornets not letting up. Miller to Mann. Trey Mann with it inside for Grant Williams. And that one takes a lucky bounce over Draymond Green. And it is back to a 10-point lead. Golden State looking to score here on this possession. Screen from Kuminga. Curry on the drive. Nobody inside to stop him, and he will show off the acrobatics with the reverse layup. Why is Brandon Miller wide open? That seems like a bad idea. Miller only wants to shoot it when he's contested, and even though it seems like a bad strategy, he's making all of them, so I can't really doubt him, and that shot ends up being the dagger. 125-113, the Hornets with the upset here in Golden State. The Hornets, I think, scored 11 points through the first six minutes of the game. And then after that, their offense caught fire, and they never cooled off. They shot really well from three. The ball movement was really impressive. And as I mentioned in the third quarter, if this game is going to continue to be a track meet, we're going to be in trouble because we're not going to be able to keep up with these guys. So the good news is our big three played well. Curry was awesome. He had 39-8. and eight. Didn't shoot the three ball very well, but otherwise he was terrific. Kuminga had a good game, 22 points on just 10 shots, 6 of 7 from 3. We probably should have gotten him the ball more. Jimmy was also pretty good with 20 and 7. But as I mentioned at the beginning of today's episode, the depth is a real question mark. We're going to have games where our three guys ball out, but if nobody else steps up, then we can lose at home to a team like the Charlotte Hornets. 35 for Miller, 9 of 12 from deep. He was impressive. 24, 4, and 4 for LaMelo, 16 for Mann, 16 for Misich. Common theme here that I also noticed in the Jazz game is that our perimeter defense in the backcourt has really been lacking. I guess that can't really be that big of a surprise. We did trade away D'Anthony Melton. We did trade away Moses Moody. Our perimeter defense on paper in the backcourt got noticeably worse, and 
it has certainly played out that way over these first few games since the deadline. We're going to simulate these next two. The Magic are a tough squad. No more Jalen Suggs. Of course, they now have Jaime Jaquez Jr. And then we've got the Sixers at the Wells Fargo Center on the road in Philadelphia. So we'll see how those games turn out as we get some good news on the injury front. Trace Jackson Davis only suffered a low back bruise. He's not going to miss any time, even though he did not play after his injury in the game against the Hornets. He's not going to miss any additional games. And then after these two matchups, Brennan Pajemski is now fully healthy after missing the last six or so weeks with a hand injury. That's a big deal. We need him off the bench as we split these two games. The first quarter against Orlando, we outscored them 19-9. That quarter might have set basketball back by about 30 years. Kuminga with 24 and 10, Curry double-double. Butler did not shoot the ball well, but he still got active in other ways. And then close loss against the Sixers, and very similarly to our game against the Hornets, the big three played really well. Maybe not Jimmy, he had seven turnovers and nine misses. But him, Kuminga, and Curry were the three best players, and again, nobody else showed up. We're continuing to struggle since the deadline. I think we only sit at a record of around 4-7. and seven. Now, part of that has been Steph Curry injured. But we really haven't played well since the deadline, even though Jimmy Butler individually has looked good. The Suns have passed us. We've dropped to 6. And the Spurs and Clippers are both heating up. They very well could pass us in the near future as well. So we've got to play better basketball. And I think having Pajemski back is going to be a huge deal. The team is fully healthy for the first time in a while. With just 20 games left to go, we're probably going to have the regular season go two more episodes, which means we're probably going to have a prospect profile in the next episode, which should be fun. Make sure to leave a like. Make sure to subscribe to the channel if you are new. Peace out.